everyone. Hello. Welcome back. I am getting in the chat right now. Well, I don't know how much of the painting you could see. It's on the side view. But I have been... I will transition. Pretty much painting on this all day. Ta-da! And it has... Oh, tons of detail. Um, it's a funny thing to say, but sometimes you, you're better off painting things that you don't like. Hey, we got some people in. Uh, as an artist, when I paint stuff that I really like, I labor on it. I have every little tiny bit has to be, you know, perfect. And this I really like. I'm really enjoying myself. So it is not going to go fast. It'll go slow. But it's the it's the journey that matters, not the not getting to the end. You know, I know so many people that all they care about is finishing, finishing, finishing. But they don't spend any time enjoying it. I like the journey. I like seeing what happens, kind of letting the painting talk to me, tell me where it wants to go. Yeah, it sounds like existential bullcrap, but it's true. If you are quiet and patient and listen, your painting will tell you a story. Welcome to the channel, Wallace. M. Wallace. Uh, Nathan put out a newsletter. So, oh, that's right. So we should have new people tonight. A lot of new people from the newsletter that went out about this. So all of you folks that are fans of Weird, that are coming aboard to check out what I'm doing, to see if I'm screwing up your favorite character, Welcome aboard. Yeah. Welcome aboard. Now, here's the deal. If you have any questions, just shoot them out there. My wife is that voice that you hear on the side. Hello. And she is running the chat. Your head's in the way, by the way. So she will Perfect. tell me whatever question you have. Don't be shy. I can paint and talk and juggle. And talk. And talk. And talk and talk and talk. Why am I reading? But what we have here for us, we'll recap. This is a painting, character painting for weird games in the Malifaux universe. universe. The and this is the Dreamer. Do you want to raise that up a little bit? Yes. Would you please shut up and not repeat everything I say? I didn't. I interrupted, but I did not repeat. You interrupt it. You're an interrupter. W raise what up? The table. Because you're hunching over and it's just making you block everything. Mm -hmm. There we go. Magic. And um, this was the first character that they chose to have me redesign. So he was a scrawny little boy in a nightgown <laughs> looking thing. And I turned him in to a little bit older and a real uh, kind of bastard. Uh, somebody you definitely do not want to have anything to do with. And I added some some things to it that weren't in the game. For example, now that he's older, he can use your nightmares against you. So you'll have to see how well you do against that. Uh, 
And being that I am also a geek and a gamer and, you know, I am as much a fan of all this stuff as you are, if not more. having a wonderful time and actually just five minutes ago when I was on the phone with the owner Nathan we were discussing he wants me to do another project that he just came up with a new one you know, some, so I'll be doing some black and white uh, illustrations for that as well uh, Tub asks, can you say which characters you're reimagining? I, I, all I know is, so far, all I know is the Dreamer. Um, they haven't told me yet what the rest are, but it will be. I think it's what, the 13 most popular? Yeah, well, no, the 13 that were, that were picked from that thing. So, yeah, 13 most popular, yes. Um. Yeah, on the weird forum. Uh, there's a poll and uh, you can vote on you know your most popular your favorite character but I think I for one other that I th I'm pretty sure of would be Lady Justice yeah just because that's Nathan's favorite yeah he and uh, and I did a drawing of when I went in to meet the owner Nathan to have our meeting I did a quick sketch of you know an idea for Lady Justice before I got there and he uh, he liked it a lot and I came up with a really cool premise for her as well and you'll see her if she's up next I'll be doing her right here I'm g I decided you know normally I just paint things on here to sell but I've decided to show all of this let everybody see what it's like you know for you would-be professionals out there you know to get a real look in the studio all I'm doing is trying to do what I wish I could have had I wish I could have had access to a, you know a 30-year veteran to kind of show me the way Uh, let's see, Wallace says, the latest expansion book, Ripples of Fate, describes the dreamer changing a bit. Yep. I didn't get to read that yet. I have everything, I believe. Yeah, we have pretty much everything. I'll tell you what. You want to know something really cool? Doing this is awesome. So much fun and such a privilege to live off of what you love because I would do this if I didn't make a dime off of it so but one of the coolest things is getting a job like this and then you go to the company you meet the people they're awesome and then they give you all of their books you know every expansion everything I got a ton of figures mm -hmm. You know, and it's all just, here you go. And they gave my wife a voodoo doll, custom voodoo doll yeah. that they had made for the company. I showed it yesterday. It's just awesome. Uh, Tad asks, do you wet blend the colors on the picture or solely layer them? No, I'm I'm blending on the on the painting. I You do both. You know, if I feel like I'm mixing... Colors down here. I'll show you the palette. And tell them that you switched because you were using watercolor yesterday. I was using watercolor. I switched to acrylics today. Can you see that? Uh, up more. That's better. Okay. I can't tilt it because it's really wet and it's gonna <laughs> just it just spilled all over me. Um. So on the palette here, I'll mix colors and then bring them up to the painting. But they also mix on the painting it's not like color by numbers and honestly it's just uh, you you learn this after time 
I think one of the hardest things to learn was how much paint to put on the paintbrush. Because at one point, I would put so much paint on the paintbrush that when I got over here to try and put some paint down, it just left a big, huge blotch of color. And it would screw up the piece all the time. So as you go along, as you do this, you learn, you know, what to do and what not to do, what to try and stay away from. For example, I don't use black. So all these darks that you see, no blacks. They're actually hues of greens and purples, you know, deep reds. Jesse wants to know, do you just use water to thin your acrylics? Yes. Yes, I don't use any secondary products for my acrylics. I have them, and the companies ask me to use them. Ed. As part of my endorsement deal, I'm supposed to use them. But what I did is I tried them. You know, I, I tried them out, and I do not feel that they... They don't hurt the painting, but for me, it doesn't bring anything more to the painting. So another step is unnecessary. Tab says, yeah, I paint minis. The paint consistency and amount on the brush is important. Yep. And also the paint that you use. You know, um, for me, I paint with nothing but Holbein paints. Now, I'll tell you the truth, I have an endorsement from Holbein, so they do pay me to use their paint. But I would not have that endorsement if I did not think that their, their stuff was not the best. Uh, I've painted for years, used Golden, you know, I've used pretty much anything you could think of. And I find that this, for me, is just hands down the best. Consistency is just dead on. I put this paint down on my palette this morning and I've been painting all day, except for when I stop for lunch. And I still have a ton of it left. A ton of it left because it goes so far. Like I used to paint with basic paints. And I don't mean just basic paints. I mean the company's called Basic. No, Liquitex Basics? Yeah, Liquitex Basics. Mm -hmm. And um, they were great. They were inexpensive. Head. You know, and uh, as, a, Better. as an artist trying to make a living, you're trying to save every buck you can. So it worked out wonderful. Except for, I went through a ton of them. Because they just didn't have, the pigment just wasn't there. But like anything worth it, this paint's expensive. This is not cheap stuff. But you get what you pay for. Let's see, Inga says I'm using acrylic paint in my sculpting class right now, but it's crappy acrylic. And you switched. Yesterday you were working originally with watercolor. Yes, yesterday it was a Japanese watercolor. Kuratake. And um, I just wasn't getting the punch. It just wasn't coming through. I had to keep going over the same area because you know, the paint was just being absorbed too quickly into the paper. The sizing on this paper was just sucking it down. So it wasn't opaque enough basically. It was it was too too transparent. Yep. Well, it just didn't have the uh It's not that it was just too transparent. It didn't have enough punch. 
if you look at this guy over here now, and you go back and look at what he looked like yesterday, you know, all this goo and snot and all that fungus just would not come through no matter what I did. So I switched paint. Now remember, whatever gets the job done, that's the right thing to use. Now there is nothing that's, you know, you should use this all the time. That's bull. You learn to paint with everything. You master your trade so it doesn't master you. And as artists, you should always experiment. Try something new. Especially things that you're nervous about using. You know, you suck at watercolor, practice watercolor. See what you can do with pastels. Expand your horizons. Now, normally, I know exactly what everything's being used for. On a project like this, I usually know it's going to be a book cover or something like that. But these, we're not really sure where they're going. I don't even think Nathan knows what where they're what's go, what nope. they're doing. Nope. Hey, Justin. Say hi to Justin. Hey, Justin. Your head's in the way again. Sorry. Camera's in a bad spot if I can't lean forward and look at the painting. Well, you're working on the bottom and you're super, super close to it. That's how I can see it. I'm just letting you know your head's in the way. Welcome to all the new people in the channel. So yes, we are on the dreamer. I could adjust the second camera so it's not on you but an over the shoulder. Whatever. Um and also I'll put up this is the third drawing for the dreamer. You know, the first two were vetoed. They just 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 didn't quite make it great drawings but they did not look the part and when you do this you know think about it like you're casting a movie you know you're not going to just cast the first person that comes in and tries out to be your you know your lead people yesterday were complaining asking why I do such detailed uh, you guys want to see one of them? Give me the, give me the circle. Yeah, sure. Please. So here, real quick, we'll take a look. Got it. This was the first uh, interpretation of the dreamer I did, but he still looks a little too young, and I didn't get the. You can't really see as much of the monsters as I'd like. Now, I tried to fit them in there, little chompy bits. But I added a big nasty tongue tentacles, but my tentacles have teeth and mouths. And some random icky yucky stuff. Yeah. And the, but the boy with the cricket bat was, I thought it was kind of cool. Now this is what I consider, you know, a sketch. This is what I do every time for a company when I'm putting together something. Yeah, and uh... Apparently, this is quite finished a piece, but to me, it's just a sketch. Tab says, oh, they didn't want to keep the cricket bat. Wallace says, not a bad concept. I like the bat. Yeah, I like the bat too. But you know what? The thing was, his head and his body, the proportions for the age that they want, he's just at the cusp. So Yeah, it's an awkward age. It's an awkward age. and. You could look young, you could look older, and this kid just came out looking too young. Who is your your inspiration? Who did I draw the kid after? Yeah. 
No idea. Nobody. Just drew a kid. But again, I mean, this came out awesome, but we just couldn't use it. So I give me the other one, honey. Which one? The one on the bed? Yeah. So I went a different way. There you go. And this was the second drawing. Oh, can you see that? Yep. Now this is missing all of the highlights. So as that other drawing had highlights everywhere, done with like a color pencil. Let me see if I got one. No, it's not in there. What are you looking for? White color pencil. A little one. That's fine. Okay, so this guy here is missing the white. So let's just put a little on there, show you what I mean. Now, so I actually stopped midway to show this to Nathan. And for those of you that know, when I mention Nathan, he's the owner of the company weird. Pilot says, hey there, wow, that's amazing. So there you go, so like this, maybe the highlights. Some. And the reason I do a drawing this detailed to show a client is so that there's no question. You know, it's completely idiot proof. You know, so in other words, no matter what kind of moron is looking at it, they're gonna understand it. But again, this one was just, you know, a little too gory, a little bit too, you know, zombie ripping flesh, and not enough nightmare. I like the the teddy, the evil teddy bear, a lot. And I tried to put some of the characters from there. And can I have him? The yeah. squid guy. Tab says, I'm thinking an Oliver slash Artful Dodger amalgam. Mm -hmm. um, so I this one was too nightmarish. Where is he, honey? He's in the box. Oh. So I went for the third drawing. Yes. I'll just take, give him the whole thing. I know, I'm giving you the boy. And this was the third drawing. There's the rest of them if you want to show them. I will. So, and I focused just on the boy so that I get get him right first. Once he was right, then I designed the whole piece here. So I left the silhouette, you know, where the kid is going to be. And then all the characters around. And I use characters directly from the game, like the Night Guy Nightmare. You can see he's right here. But I wanted them to the I wanted them to see how I would draw it. So I wasn't going to draw it the way that it is in their books. So I did my own interpretation, and that's this guy, which has a great deal more depth and texture, and you know the. The idea is to make the, the mouth look like it's constantly moving. Let's see here. So Poor Mama says to Tab, maybe with a little Lord of the Fly of the Flies thrown in. Uh, let's see. Wallace says I always thought of Malifaux version of a Malifaux version of Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. Here's how some. how long does it take to sketch these ideas? Uh, I sketch these pretty quick. I'm I draw really, really fast. And the reason I draw so fast is that you'll see there's no other lines around. I have been training for years with the philosophy of being like a samurai. You know, I don't do 50 cuts, I do one. So when I draw, it is usually first, this is the first time, first shot. You know, it's not redrawn 50 times. I don't do 10 lines to get that leg. Now this leg, that line that you see, that was the first and last, you know, first and only line down to draw that leg. 
So I draw it all in my head first. I see this crystal clear and then I draw it out. Now you can see I wanted to show what the little girl on the painting might look like. I wanted a good idea of what she might look like. So I drew this out so they get a clear idea when I send it into the company. This is what the little kids are going to look like. And even I've had to go as far as to, you know, do color comps and send that into companies. But all of these things enrich the painting. You can take shortcuts, you can leave things to chance, you can, you know, not care. Wild says, measure twice, cut once. Yes, yes. You know, I care. I want it to be. You know, I lost my eyesight and I haven't been able to paint or draw for a couple of years now. And I, you know, I, I made a promise to myself that if ever I had the ability to do this again, you know, I won't cut corners, I won't cheap out, I won't phone it in, I will knock it out of the park. Good, bad, or indifferent, it'll be the best that I could possibly do. And my word is my bond. agrees absolutely I think to the measure twice cut once mm -hmm. Perfect. now this paint this type of painting is gonna haze over so everything I do is gonna have a slight haze to it but when the painting's done it'll get a clear coat and that clear coat will bring all of these colors popping out so you can see as you're painting, when it's wet, it has a much deeper tone. And then it dries, you know, essentially a little flatter. But I know what that final step is going to be, so I don't have to worry about it. And this is called glazing. Um, I'm laying you know, colors down in thin membrane over the pencil. I mean over the, the monochromatic painting. Western Front. There we go. Also, another thing that most people don't think about is the lighting in here. Now, I started this painting early this morning and the lighting in this room was much different because I have the window to my left there. Wallace asks, is he summoning all those monsters from a some kind of portal, correct? Yes. Poodle Mama replied to what I said. Uh, she says, we're all in awe, Sammy. <laughs> Because I said it was all quiet. Yeah. If 
funny thing is most of this painting has been painted with this liner. Yeah, and that little round brush. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, I have probably 300 paintbrushes, but uh, I have a tendency to paint a whole painting with maybe three. Thank you for the follows. We got two new follows. Three Ooh. new follows. What's that bring us to? Uh, I don't know. Let's find out. Now, and I am going back and forth. Uh, I'm laying in midtones. Six hundred and fourteen. And shadows, but I'm also dropping in highlights. So this this character will be completely rendered before I move on. Jesse asks, have you ever clear coated just a section of a painting to make that area quote unquote pop? If so, what did you think of the results? I'm thinking of trying it to get a reflective quality to a huge pupil. Yeah, yeah, I've done it. Um, a, what kind of clear coat are you doing? What do you got? Camera slid. <laughs> now this character has a little green on him, so I'm doing I'm washing red into the shadows, and it'll give the appearance, you know, of being a real deep black. Tab says, losing your sight must be a hell of an experience for anybody, let alone a visual artist. Yes, it was. It was unbelievably horrible. I like to consider it my season in hell. I feel like I lost my entire life through that time. You know, how many things I missed out on. And the worst part is, it's not even like you're dead. You know, if I was dead, I wouldn't know. But knowing, knowing that I can't see my my wife or my dogs. You know, everybody talked about the art and not being able to paint was horrible. But not being able to see those that you love, to hear their voice and not see their face, see their smile. That was terrible. That was, that was hell. But, you know, we are, uh, we are fighters. I have fallen down many a times. And I've always gotten back up again. Uh, Jesse replied to your question and said, uh, Blickrylic Polymer Gloss from Dick Blick. Okay, that should work fine. I also like to think of it as it was a great, great opportunity. You know, something that most people never get. When I was asked about getting my eyesight back, I would often say that if I got my eyesight back, you know, the sky will never look as beautiful to you as it does to me. Because I've gone without it for years. Your priorities change a great deal.
I'm readjusting this so that we can get a better angle on what you're doing because you're real small down there. Is that in your way? No. Okay. It's a little bit better. The other thing that that's thank God over. I hope it stays over. Is I had incredibly bad vertigo. If anybody's seen me over the last couple of years, you've seen me in my wheelchair. I wasn't able to walk with the vertigo. So I've spent the last was it two years in that chair now? Yes, two years. And uh, now that I'm up on my feet again, I find that my legs are as weak as kittens. Apparently, if you don't walk for two years, you lose muscle tone. But I keep trying. But all of it, I think about, you know, I think about the idea of, you know, You, know, you judge somebody not on how they fall down, but how they get back up. If they get back up. You know, too many people give up. You know, wallow in their own misery. You know. <laughs> Everybody what? likes the new angle. Can you see it well? Heck yeah. It's right over the, sh it's a low over the shoulder. So good. it's right even with your hand. It's a good angle. This guy reminds me of an angry frog. Like that? That kind of angle? A angry frog? How's it go again? Yeah. Not frogs, talk. Tab bonus, we get to see Sammy's smiling face through the brushes. <laughs> Did your sight return gradually, Tab asks? No, not really. It uh, kind of came back on the way home from San Diego. And I didn't realize that I could see. Uh, I kind of thought I was dreaming it. And then I started apparently randomly... Pointing out colors and objects and, objects colors objects and cars. Objects. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of that was to make sure that I was actually seeing it. You know, you kind of imagine things, or I did, in the blindness. You kind of, you know, I have a bit of a photographic memory. So when I remember it, you know, I picture it, I could see it. And that's what I did the whole time I couldn't see. That's why I was able to draw. I was able to walk around my house. You know, I remember where everything is. You know, I definitely wasn't one of those blind people that constantly fell tripping over things. Apparently my spatial awareness is pretty acute. Oh, yeah it is. <laughs> what? The picture of me behind the brushes with the dogs. 
That's what he was. That's what Jesse was talking about. He said, "Sammy, isn't that a picture of you behind the brush holder?" That's what I was referring to. Yep. Yeah, I got a bunch of people asking for you know a camera on me, but our system right now only allows two cameras to run, and we kind of jury rigged that to work, which is why there's a delay on the second camera, uh, a audio visual delay between them. Is there? Yeah. But I tried to have a Sammy cam, but I'll have to figure out, you know, figure out another way to do it. But I adjust, I, we created the new rigging, and that's what took up uh, the time as well. Sandwich break. What are you eating, Tommy? Peanut butter jelly. Sammy style. Yeah? Now, this doesn't go quick because I have to lay in all the color, let it dry, see how it dries, and then work accordingly. Show Fury. Just jumping around Twitch, stumbled onto your channel. Amazing vision. Blows my mind how all of your all of your art all of your artists can be can pull from the from you mind so well. I think how all of your art can be pulled out of your imagination. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just making sure that I was reading that right. And welcome to the channel. Yeah, I was going to say all of my artists. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Although he does have, uh, you know, multiple personality syndrome. Uh, it's a disorder. Whatever. Me, me. So I'm going to stick with this single angle for the time being because he's working pretty low. But if you guys ever want me to switch to the overhead camera, just shout and I shall. So these are my pile of rats. And basically right now I'm painting the air around them. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Heart case. What the? This looks amazing. Sho says, it does. Inga says, is that a severed ear on the floor in the painting? Probably. It is Tommy, after all. A severed ear? Is that possible? Where? On the, on the ground. I know, but where? That's a sandwich. That's a spatula. Giant worm. I think she's talking about the eyeball. If you're looking at this, it's an eyeball. <laughs> Hard case goes, is that possible? Poodle Mama replies to him, it is for Tommy, apparently. Anything's possible. It is true. We are the dreamers of the dream. Oh. Just an eyeball, Wallace says. <laughs> I did say that rather blasé, didn't I? 
horror wise. That's much worse horror wise. Well, this character right here in the game uh, rips out people's eyes. So I wanted to wanted to have a a nod to that. Oh yeah, that is what I was looking at. The eyeballs. Sounds fun. Everybody's got to have a hobby. That's right. Well, this is why we get along. This is why this is the perfect gig for me. sound. Ah, I think we've, oh, my bad. I froze the camera. All good now. No, I'm trying to, um, how did you learn to draw these amazing pictures? I am actually self-taught. I really wanted to do it, and uh, when I was in high school, my art teacher, Dan Iorio, you know, taught me, really taught me how to study. You know, you know how to how to look at the painting, how to figure it out. Essentially, he taught me to fish. Fed me for the rest of my life. And uh, I've got a mountain of crappy paintings, and I climbed that mountain to get to good ones. I did not start out perfect, and I am far from perfect now. But I had determination, I had drive. Found my way here due to the weird newsletter. Just wondering how much of the background stories of things you are painting and have read into. I've read everything I they gave me on this. I read everything I could that I could find about the Dreamer. And yeah. I I research it immensely. Every one of the characters that I'll be doing, I will know everything about them. I teach that as well. If you look to any of my students, they'll tell you how I insist that they know everything about the character. Because if you don't know everything about it, then you cannot properly interpret it. And here, I'm asked to reinvent it. So how could I possibly do that if I have no idea what I'm what I'm inventing or reinventing.
The only thing I wish is that I had more time so that I could actually play the game. But it's not enough hours in the day. He says, cool, it's just this piece, although centered on the dreamer, does include others, and I wondered if you had looked into them too. Yep, I did. That's why I chose them. And welcome to the channel, Scientologist. I'm just glad that people noticed that there's the other characters. Right. But every one of these paintings, no matter who I'm painting, will have the primary character and as many secondary characters as possible to help, you know, tell the story in one image. I hate rats. That's why you draw them all the time. I know. Why did it have to be rats? Why is it gonna be snakes? The other camera is at an angle where all you see is your hand. So it just looks like a disembodied hand painting. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I have it where it's pushed out, so it kind of, you can't see your face because it's cut off. Just makes me giggle. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't fix that. Because I'm a boss. There we go. So you're pushing some things back, pulling other things forward. Uh, Scientologist says the rats might just be more practice for if you are doing Hamlin. Hmm. I don't know. You know the Pied Piper? Yes, I know who you're talking about. It was just a non-committal comment that you said. <laughs> so. At some points, I actually concentrate. What? Yeah, I was thinking about it. What? You were thinking about concentrating? Mm hmm. Oh, fair enough. When I was working on, um, uh, Detective, you know, Batman, the Batman comics, I would spend hours doing extremely detailed piles of garbage in alleyways and what have you. Yeah. And because it's art by committee, so it'd go to an inker and to a colorist, they would always just cut out all the work I did. You know, just black everything out. That sucks. Yeah. Because they're lazy? Yeah. And then I'd go to my editor, because we'd get complaints. People would complain that the artwork didn't look as good, you know, in the finished product. And he would tell me, you know, you got to really up your game. And I'd come back in with the photocopies of the pencils and show him what the ink looked like, the finished piece looked like compared to the original drawing. How many inkers did you get fired? Until I got Rodney, I had about four. <laughs> Toxica, yay Tommy, I'm so happy to see you streaming today. Welcome back, Toxica. Cheesy Puffs, wow, this dude is a baller. You are a baller, honey. I'm a what? A baller. I don't know what that means. Like a badass. Oh, okay. Thank you. And Toxica says, awesome, painting as always. Uh, Airbrush Mike says, Tommy mentioned yesterday he prints a few copies of his underpainting 
so he can experiment briefly with color from time to time. Do you guys use the same printer for the prints you sell 11 by 17 and 20 by 30? I notice most printers charge a good amount for 20 by 30 prints. If so, and specific Canon printers do you suggest? I own... Whoops, the I, caps lock. He got all excited at the end. I own my own uh, large scale printer. So all my 20 by 30s we print at our house. Yeah, on that large scale. Um, the 11 by 17s, you know, I have a company that produces those. Yeah, the 11 by 17s are just regular laser, four color laser printers. The uh, 20 by 30s are Giclés, so they're printed with the 12 color cannons uh, inkjet. But those are, you know, the same amount as a, you know, compact car purchasing them. Um, I do all the reproduction work. So, Mike, I would say, you know, it, any of the cannons, um, any inkjet cannon would be good for you, um, you know, consider. To uh, what you really want to look into is cost of ink and paper paper and um, machine maintenance how how hard is it are you able to change the print head or do you have to have it do you have to have a service change your print head um, yeah what he's talking about is uh, user maintenance is often what it's referred to when you're doing research on them So, um, you know, like, uh, what he's talking about is the cannons to print use basically, uh, thermal uh. pressure to spray the ink, where Epson printers use, um, an electric, uh, like static electrical charge. So if you're changing the print head, it requires you to call a maintenance guy that could potentially cost you hundreds of dollars an hour. Or with the Canon, because it's more of a plug-and-play, because like I said, it just uses air pressure. Uh, you can, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks on the printhead, pop it out, and put it in yourself. Uh, let's see, Cheesy Pops. Not as dark as Iron Maiden album art, but where did you get the inspiration for this style? Where did I get the inspiration for this style? Hmm. Um... There is no inspiration for this style. This is the way I paint. I don't look to anybody else. No, this is uh, this way of painting used to be commonplace during the Renaissance. But most people shy away from it because it's completely unforgiving. And extremely difficult to master. Those are all the reasons I love it. He says, yeah, I figured. I chose the wrong words. <laughs> and then he did a face slap emoji. No, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's no big deal. What, what do you always say? There's no stupid questions, only stupid people? Yep. <laughs> said thank you so much exclamation point but you know it's a great inspiration rent electricity oh yeah those are, those are very inspiring things food I particularly know. like food yeah Keeping my husband in the manner to which he is accustomed. Poor. <laughs> I don't have to work very hard. I 
zoomed in so people could see what you were doing a little better. Uh, can you see the rats now? Yeah. I realize why my stomach's been hurting. Why is your stomach hurting? When I paint like this, I'm crowd. I'm You're crunching? Yes. <laughs> Lift the table up more. So you're not crunched over. That's as high as it goes. Excellent. I can't believe it's the 18th already. I don't even know what month it is. October. I know. Jesse asks, do you always use raw umber and earned sienna? He meant burnt, but I thought it was funnier to say earned. Uh, for underpainting. Or do you use different colors based on the quote unquote feel you want the finished product to have? Um, you know what? I pretty much always just use the burnt umber and the, the burnt sienna. Could you use other colors? Yeah, I could be. I, I mean, I have painted in just black and white. And, uh, you know, I've painted in purple. For desired effects, mm -hmm. but for the most part, you know, I do this. Mecca says hi from Rome. You're the best. I always wanted to go to Rome. I think that's the furthest east we have. Rome, of people stopping in. Yeah, we got them from all over the world. Welcome to the channel. It is kind of awesome. You know, I... Uh, I do this to help, to inspire. Streaming, you mean? Yeah. And it's really rather wonderful when we get people from all over the world, places that I might not ever get to go to, but you still get to, you know, reach people. It's kind of amazing with the future we live in. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Tab says, I've seen people use green for underpainting, usually when painting flesh tones with oils on top. Mm-hmm. Yep, there's all different uh, techniques. There's a whole bunch of different stuff. You know, I, I've had I've had people tell me you absolutely have to do this or you absolutely have to do that. You know, but you find out what works for you. Well, I hate to break it to you, but if the cones in your eyes does, do not see all those greens, you know, that's not going to work. I can't wait when you paint the cat, the upside down cat head. Cat. Why? Because I just think it's funny. Can you see it? Yeah, it's on the screen. It's in the very corner. Yeah, right the there is a cat with its head completely upside down. It's like Exorcist Cat. I think you got those brushes at Hobby Lobby, the one you're using. Mm -hmm. The liner. Yeah. Ow. Don't do that. Yeah, I was, I've been watching another atelier. And I've been 
trying to watch some of their classes and see what they do and I was never so disappointed in my life why is that well first all they do is copy other artists mm -hmm. and then talk about how you know how great they are and how you know they pretty much are putting other artists down talking about how easy their style is but yet they never do anything direct the guy gave an anatomy class and he had a woman ah, sitting in front of him and he was just drawing her so he wasn't really showing you how to do anatomy. Do anatomy. He's teaching you how to draw something in front of you. You know, which is a necessary thing, but you know, sitting there saying that he's an anatomist and that he knows anatomy would say to me that you could just pick up a pencil and draw it. You know. Justin says you snuck the Cheshire cat in the art. That I did. And I, you know, watch them paint, and they paint what I consider they paint terrified. They're trying to control everything. You know, that it's, uh, really annoying. And they had nothing but absolutes. You absolutely have to do it this way. Absolutely have to use this. Absolutely have to do that. And I just think that's a terrible way to do it. You know, but I'm watching it on YouTube and I'm arguing with the screen. Is that what you were doing the other night? basically use fear and uh, the video game mentality to get people to go to their art schools and spend a hundred thousand dollars to get a fourteen thousand dollar a year job I have no real education no core knowledge Come on, you know how many people we know have major degrees and don't know anything? Yep. Tab says, it's often a good indicator that someone's opinion lacks validity if they use absolutes a lot. Yeah. Absolutely right. <laughs> 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 Come on, that was funny. That was great. Yeah, Sam and Clemens said, don't let school get in the way of your education. Cheesy, po cheesy puffs quoted. Yeah. Uh, my niece... Which should be on here. Bailey, are you out there? You Bailey? watching? Yeah. Is she watching? I love that Bailey's watching, though. Terrible. Bad Bailey. But I was just talking to my... I had my niece out in San Diego. Of course, she wants to be an artist. And I was telling her, don't go to art school. Come to my house. Yeah. Uh, there's no time ever in this career that somebody's going to ask you for your degree. It's all what you can do.
went to school to be a psychiatrist. Why am I doing this? What the hell is that about? Mm. That's probably why you're so good at this. Because I went to school to be a psychiatrist? Sure. All the hidden psychology of color and, you know, what putting what where so it elicits what response. Yep, I know that stuff. So, right now I'm really cutting in shadows and highlights. And uh, what you have to remember is that light shows color and texture. But the shadows, those define shape. So without proper shadows, your image will have no structure. When it has no structure, it looks like flat, or it looks like a color by numbers, has no depth. Let's see, Mike says, I have 12 prints from you guys hanging in my studio. If my wife doesn't get me an original or at least a 20 by 30 print for Christmas, I'm going on a something, a deleted, oh, a strike. Painting is freaking sick in a good way. Thank you. I have no idea why you deleted that, saying it was a link. Well, when I first took this, I really wanted to make something awesome. Uh, and I'm very happy with what I've gotten so far. And I'll say it again. You probably hear it from me a million times. You know, anything worth doing is worth doing well. So you take your time, pay attention to every detail, and make it the best that you can for today. Will it be perfect? No. It'll never be perfect. There is no perfect. Perfect does not exist. Anybody that says they have to do everything till it's perfect is an idiot. There is no perfect. But we make it as good as we possibly can for today. Is this the best that I can do for today? Yes. So then my job is done and done well. You know, knowing that I compete constantly with uh, Bob Ross on this channel, yeah, I keep feeling myself like a, oh, we got a happy little, look at this, a happy little cart in the milk. Oh, right next to the rats. I had to put some rat poop in here. Definitely. Without a deadline, how do you know something is finished? How do I know it's finished? Mm -hmm. Yeah, without a deadline. <laughs> Does yeah. the deadline dictate it's done? <laughs> well, you get to a point where you're like, well, I guess it's done because i got to send it in now. I know it's done because it's done. Because I know which, where the final level should be. It has nothing to do with a deadline. It has everything to do with experience. You know, I'll get a... It's just like when I talk to an editor and they'll tell me, 
oh, we need the cover to be like this. And I'll tell them, you know, I, I think it should be this way. And they'll argue because it's their job. And then I'll ask, how many covers have you painted? Um, but you, uh, you really just base it all on experience. And the level that you want the painting to be. Now, some people are all enthralled with photorealism. And I could sit here and I could paint these rats to look like a little photograph of rats. But you know what? Who gives a crap about that? Cameras do that. I'm not a camera. I'm going to give you an interpretation, my perception of rats. And I'm going to, my focus is not on just how they look, but how it makes you feel. What is your reaction to this shot of rats? Everything is about the emotional response. Does it create a sense of drama? Does it have more than just an image? Jesse says, I've learned to critique pieces a lot better since I've been watching you on Twitch. There's a comic book artist that sells a lot of stuff on Facebook, and I've always liked his work. The other day, one of his pieces just seemed off to me. When I looked closer, I noticed his hands were not realistic. I looked back, and all of his work is like that. It's not horrible, and it's still better than I can do right now, but it bugs me. Um, oh, but it bugs me now. It's the first thing I see in his work now. Well, when I, when I take a student, when somebody comes and asks me to help them, an artist, I tell them, you know, are you sure? Because I'm going to destroy all that you love right now. And they don't get it, but I teach them what to look for. And once you know what to see, it can never be unseen. Unseen. <laughs> So, I taught my wife uh, storytelling. She is a wonderful storyteller. You know, she's writing books. And hopefully soon we'll have some out for everybody to read. But I taught her storytelling. So now, every single time we watch a movie, 10 minutes in a movie, you hear her yell, Oh, I got it! <laughs> Oh, oh, I know what's going to happen. And it's like we don't even have to watch the rest of the movie. And then I'll put, point something out in a movie. I'll say, ah, it's that one. And then at the end of the movie, you find out I was right. And she's like, how the hell did you know that? How would you figure that out? But it does kind of take away a lot of the magic. Because we can love something, but once we see the holes in it, once we see its shortcomings, you know, it can't be unseen. Justin says, bring the pain. He put like eight exclamation points. So I thought it needed to be said like Randy Savage. That was pretty good. Right? But you are better off knowing that. You know, you should, everybody should know. If you love something, if something's important to you, you should have the respect to learn it. This is why a lot of artists bother me. You know, cause hey, I, plus, Sammy. <laughs> you know, a lot of artists get on my nerves because they want to do this, but they don't study. They know nothing. And then they have the arrogance, you know, the audacity to point at others. It's just like the digital art. You know, one of my good friends. You know, my friend Todd. Lockwood? Yes, Lockwood. One of the best illustrators, you know, ever. Just fantastic. I have nothing but tons of respect for him. And he's a digital painter now. Yeah. You know, he switched over, but my God, what he could do with oil paints, you couldn't even fathom. 
I still can't do. Now I sit in awe of it. So it's not just that I like despise the computer or that it's wrong. It's just all the kids that do it today, all the newbies, they just want it to be simple. Simple and quick. Anything worth having is worth. Ow! Motherless deliverers. Stop banging stuff in my studio. I, no, I kicked the thing. I'm trying to move this down so we can see you painting the bottom of the painting. Oh, I just kicked that and it really hurt. Now, anybody that paints with acrylic, I'll teach you something. Get a spray bottle of water, something that does like a mist. And when your paint is on the palette, periodically spray it with water. Now keep it wet and that way it won't dry out on you. You won't wind up with just a pile of dried acrylic sitting next to you. And get a sealable palette. Now utilize a sealable palette so that when you're done for the day and you want to put your paint away, it goes into a sealable palette. That way it's there for you tomorrow. Uh, you're not losing all of this, all of the paint. Actually, I'm kind of surprised. What? Oh, I don't know. I I was kind of expecting the, you know, onslaught of art students complaining or, you don't know. Remember those girls came up to me and told me that uh, their teachers sold a file for like for a hundred thousand dollars. As I said, you can't sell, there's no original to sell when you do digital. Right. And they were saying, yes, there is. Or, and the guy from SCAD told them that he sold Oh, that's right. A file. I don't know who it was, but yeah. I don't know who it was either, and I, I pretty much know all of them. Would you put the pallet in the fridge? I've heard that. I wouldn't. I've heard that, but I, I never do. I, I don't know. I no. would imagine it would dry out faster because there's no humidity in there. Yeah. Yeah, just get a sealable palette. I mean, I've heard that shtick about sticking it in the fridge. But I don't see how that would work, because that would still dry. I mean, if it didn't, then food wouldn't dry out. hard to have humidity when you have no you know with a colder temperature mm -hmm. tack on dylan tommy i'm so glad to hear and see that you are doing better i've loved your work since the moment i met you in dragon con 2014 i still look at my harley quinn every day keep being a badass thank you thank you Well, I don't know about a badass. I just never learned how to quit. <laughs> Giving up's not part of my vocabulary. And now, this is my philosophy. And hopefully to help you, but remember, you are the god of your world. If you don't put it in there, 
it doesn't exist. So I think about everything, every little divot on the ground, every little roach, every little piece of nothing sitting there that was given consideration. And I've been ridiculed. Uh, other artists think it's nuts. You know, that it's way too far. And I say that's great. You know, good for you. Don't think about it. Don't make it magic. Don't love it. Uh, go back to Photoshop. Yeah, go back to tracing. Mm -hmm. Well, tracing is something very common nowadays. So many artists out there taking photographs of people, making it a layer. You know, I'm bringing it into Photoshop and then drawing right on top of it. And then calling it their work. You know, their genius. Nothing but a bunch of thieving bastards. Thanks for the follow, Tech. Yeah, so you you should think about who, what, where, everything when it comes to your painting. Think about past, present, future. You know, has this object existed in the past? If so, where? How was it used? What was it used for? What is it? The more real you make it for you, the more real it's going to be for the viewer. Uh, Tab says, I seem to remember Boris Vallejo tracing a lot. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if Boris does. I I do not know Boris. I know pretty much everybody. But Boris, I don't know. I've never met him. I know that he uses models. I mean, he married one. Oh, Julie was a model. And there's nothing wrong with using models. It's when people just photograph something or take a photo and copy it. Throw it as a layer into Photoshop and trace over it? Yeah. And then they sit back and say, yes, yes, this is my work. <laughs> Everything I do is photorealistic. No, I, I know artists that if you look at their work and then take Google out and do a search on whatever you're looking at, that'll be the first or second piece that you find. Because mm. that's exactly where they got it. Tab says, yeah, he takes pics of the models and traces them, but then he changes a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, the man's been doing it for a lifetime and is a genius painter. His paintings are beautiful. You know, like I said, it's not just using a model. It's when they, you know, don't even draw it. They just draw over it. I used to do the same thing when I was a kid. I used to draw my TV guide. And I would draw right over whatever was on the cover. You know, turn them into monsters and stuff. Purple pillow. Now I am using a very limited palette. Uh, it's not a lot of colors on my palette here. And that'll make more 
make it a more uniform Tech asks, is there a difference for using an image slash person, place, thing, etc. as inspiration for your initial spark uh, imagination? No, that's fine. No, you do research and that's going to influence you. So if you have to paint, if I have to paint a whale, you know, I'm not just going to start drawing. I'm going to look up whales. You know, I'm going to look up different kind of whales. And that's going to inspire me. You know. Is that a bloody pillow? Yeah. Just, you don't, you just don't steal. That's what it really gets to me is the stealing. And then saying it's yours. Yeah. That's just a thief. And there's a certain level of hell for, th for thieves. I mean, when I did this, I was looking up drawings by little kids that suffer from night terrors. And I looked up when, I, when we were doing the kid he was requested to be a real nasty kind of want to punch him in the face as soon as you see him kid. So I looked up child murderers. And the guy that inspired this kid doesn't look anything like him. But when I read what he did, you know, killing his, he was adopted. And he murdered his adopted parents, you know, after they gave him a home loved them to death took care of them put them through school you know, did everything for them and the kid got up in the middle of the night and murdered them because they wouldn't let him have something I forget what it was was it like ice cream or something stupid like that no it was going somewhere with his friends oh. uh, let's see attack on Dylan says well that sounds like a wonderful research subject lol Toxica says, oh man, night terrors are horrible. I had night terrors when I was a kid. Thanks God, I'm okay now. Yeah. Night terrors are pretty bad. But I looked up that because my background, if you didn't hear me say it before, is I went to college, but I went to college to be a psychiatrist. And I come from a family that has a great deal of mental problems. So, it's why I went to school for it, and it's also why I left school. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you use everything you can to, I guess, be inspired. To help influence and get the best image that you can. You just don't steal and take. You know, I know an artist, but I won't mention her name, but she's extremely competitive with me. <laughs> and uh, she photographs things and steals them and is using a technique that is greatly credited to another artist and acts as if she created it. And they're horrible copies. I And it's always funny, and I can tell you right away, I'll tell you a secret on how to pick out who drew from a photograph 
and who draws from their head. All right, there's a trick to it. We see out of two eyes, so we see binocular. A camera sees out of one eye, ocular. So what that means is, when you look at their image, you'll see things like large top of the body, small bottom of the body. You'll see the front of the car wide and the back of the car looks like it's squeezed shut. And that's because they use a photograph that is only seen out of a single eye. So anytime I get these so-called artists coming to me, and they always come to me and ask me, you know, to look at their work. At least they do it one time. And when I say the same thing, you want the truth? Or do you want me to be nice to you and tell you that you're a pretty, pretty princess? Inga has a very important question. Yes, Inga. Uh, Aunt Sammy, Uncle Tommy, how do you feel about killer clowns on the loose? How do I feel about killer clowns on the loose? Yes. I'm fine with it. Um, sweetie, when I was around 22, I went to the Ringling Brother and Barnum Bailey Circus School for Clowning and became a certified clown so I could do children's parties and make extra money when my art wasn't selling. And after each gig, I would go down to uh, what at the time was called Two Guys, basically like a Walmart. And I would stand in the crook of the door in the dark holding one of the balloons dressed as a clown and when people would come out I would follow them silently to their car <laughs> what? I'm laughing at you Oh, and uh I got arrested six times for it Toxica says I hate clowns they are scary hell spawns they all should be shot to death <laughs> Tech laughs. Uh, Tab says, do you find the illustration world particularly competitive or supportive in general? The competitive? Um, competitive or supportive? Well, it's a, it's a small community. And, um... Fun fact, Tommy is a clown, lol. It's a small community, but... It really came to my to my aid when I got, you know, we, we we got pretty bad there, and we needed help. And it wasn't my family that came to help; it was my art family, people that I didn't think even liked me, and some people that openly didn't like me became, you know, good friends and super helpful. No. But I've never felt competition. I don't feel any competition. And if you study and, you know, make yourself have true knowledge, true wisdom of all of this, you won't feel the competition because it won't be there. I've always, always gotten every gig I went out for. I mean, I got refused in the beginning, but I didn't know my ass from my elbow. Um, but I learned. You should be a master of your trade before you go out to do it. And unfortunately, most artists never master their trade never learn everything are usually one hit wonders and think that they're you know God's gift and the truth is most artists grow up you know they grow up in a family that tells them they're perfect pretty, pretty princesses. and how great they are you know and especially nowadays everything's everybody's a winner 
You know, everybody gets an award. Everybody's special. And I hate to break it to you, but you're not friggin' special. Do something that defines you as special. You know, what is it that puts you where you are? You don't look at a major athlete and think, oh, well, they got there because they got nice hair. You know, they, they did. They worked hard. They sacrificed to be able to do what they do. You know. But that all goes down to the same thing. You know, the, the master has failed more times than the student has even tried. You know, I hear it all the time. People asking me, uh, you know, they act like I picked up a pencil first day and that was it. I was just, it all just came to me and it magically appeared. You know, I wish I could bring you back and sit with me through the long, long nights. You know, studying, drawing, reading, drawing, you know, what was it? Drawing 2,000 hands. When I first met Frazetta, he told me I sucked. My hands were atrocious. Go learn how to draw hands. Come back when I could draw like a man. And I went and I drew 2,000 hands. Before I came back to see him. You know, I sat there. Of course. I was a kind of a profiteer. So I would go and find the prettiest girl I could. Is that really what a profiteer? Is that really the proper term for what you did? That or whore. Whichever one you want. Okay, I'm just saying. I profited off of it. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. In many ways. In many ways. ways. <laughs> Continue. So, and I would just go and ask them, can I draw your hands? You know. And I would sit there and draw their hands and study and try and figure it out. And when I went back, he said, eh, it's a start. They don't suck. You know, I'm going to go do more. And I did the same thing when I was trying to learn to draw the skull. You know? And even now, you'll see all around the studio, you know, I have a full skeletal maquette. Now, over there, you can see a full, you know, body. Just, you just have to, it's about respect. I respect what I do. I respect the people I do it for. Uh, and uh, I respect myself. So at the end of the day, when everything's said and done, and you look back and you say, you know, what do I do? What, what contribution did I give? You know? When this all started, I have diabetes. This all started the day in 2012, I went into a diabetic coma in our living room. And my wonderful, amazing wife resuscitated me. Saved my life. Uh, and um, when I came out of it, you know, you think about what did you do? What what mark did you leave? Everybody everybody gets to you know get a chance to roar. Some people leave no mark, leave no sound. Nothing about them will echo through time. And I was just happy with the fact that all the work that I had done has always been not just to be a great artist, you know, but show the world the beauty and the awesomeness that is 
you know, painting, art, the expression of oneself. Night, Dick. Tech said, wow, I found someone interesting. Following on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Super interested in your work. And then he, uh, they asked, are your streams times random or do you have a particular estimated schedule? And I gave them super, also super cool studio as well. <laughs> I Here. answered our stream times. And he says, oh, make sure to stop by around those times. And oh, I understand. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's my time to go. Take care. September Jones says, I'm a musician, but your philosophy on art is still very applicable to music. Very inspiring. Mm. Thanks for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. That's something I always wanted to do. I always wanted to be able to sing. I sing all the time. It's rather atrocious and kind of hurts. But if I didn't do this, that probably would have been the what I went for. And it sure isn't much different. I would have been on the road like crazy, like I am now. Hi, Fina. Say hi to Fina. Hi, Fina. You know who Fina is, right? No. Ireland. Oh, Sent you Fina. that awesome shirt. Yes. Yes, you sent my awesome shirt. I love it. When I wear this shirt, I tell everybody about you. She says, evening, with a smiley face. How long have we been going? Uh, an hour and 47 minutes. Oh. You actually got a lot done. Did I? Yeah. Doesn't feel like it. She says, aw, shucks. I love getting gifts from all over the world. It's awesome. <laughs> Jesse says your war pigs duet with Oliver is awesome They're both sleeping because they haven't been bothering me. Today. No, they haven't been over here. It's surprising. I think they got used to it. They're like, ah, oh, whatever. Fine, ignore us. We're going to pee on the couch. They're just happy that uh, Ripley. Ripley's gone. Yeah. You never really think dogs would have an opinion about each other like that. Well, but they just... really do not like her. Yeah. I feel bad for Ripley, though. I know. Ripley's are my friend Wayne's dog. She's a rescued and, uh, beagle. She's uh, about nine years old. We watch her when he goes to shows. And especially now that I'm unable to go to shows. But uh, the dog's stupid as a brick. And actually, that's, make, that's putting the brick down. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> Who? Blame. I said she's not very bright. And he goes, he goes yeah, she's uh, as dumb as a brick. And that's putting the brick down. <laughs> Yeah, we've been friends for a long time. Continue what you were saying, though. Uh, so anyway, um, the uh, my dogs. We have two dachshunds. Really, just don't like her. So anytime she's here, they're like, "Oh God, she's back again." So they like snub her, and she chest bumps them, and they growl at her. 
But you could see they get all uppity and yeah, they annoyed when she gets here. And then when she leaves, they're like, they celebrate. kind of mean but it's also difficult because the dog Ripley is so stupid that you try we try and play with her and she's just not smart enough to play she just you know you're like hey you want, you want to play and you're like I want to play uh. she's like a idiot Mike Tyson dog says my dog oh uh my dogs are based against or are biased against yorkies for some reason jesse says i've got primo working on a commission for me now he's underpainting it as well and it looks killer so far good is that the dragon lady painting I don't know. Girl with big boobs. That's all I saw so far. Snake woman, yes. So while you've been streaming, I just helped brand a food truck company. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> He used a friend of his for the reference. Yeah, April. Oh, yeah, yeah, April. Kyle, you know the, you know Kyle, uh, that um, I did the Metal Gear Solid commission for? Yes. He, um, he's tired of being in the kitchen, so he's starting up a food truck company. And he wants to do, like, smaller servings of, of um, like, lunch size servings of, you know, more fancy meals like stuffed shells, stuff like that, but make it more accessible, you know. And uh, he was going to call it Serenity Galley or Snake Eater. And I told him, don't use either of those names. I said, Serenity Gallery, Galley sounds like it's a massage truck. Mm -hmm. And then I laughed and I said, do you give happy endings? <laughs> and I told him his nickname, because his last name is Ott, so he his nickname is Big Boss Ott. And I said, you should call it Big Boss Ott's Good Eats. And he got all excited about that. And then, because he does all the tactical stuff, like mm -hmm. ping pong and stuff, I said it should be like a little caricature of him with a bandana, and he has a, um, a tactical chef's apron, and he should be holding like a spatula and a, and a carving knife, you know, in the center of the circle logo. And then on the top it says Big Boss Eats. Or Big Boss Ots, Good Eats. Are you going to draw it? Yeah, I told him I would. idea? Yeah. He got all excited. I drew it out real quick. 
You don't care. Maybe I should go into branding. <laughs> doing a very good job of keeping your head out of the way, honey. It's my dream in life. Yeah. Not for me to nag you about your head being in the way. You're not nagging me. That's what I mean. No, I just mean in general. Oh. Jeez, right? It's just tuned in. Damn, this painting looks amazing already. Two grapes. Oh. I said grapes. Jeez, right? It's just tuned in. Damn, this painting looks amazing already. Yeah, that's pretty much only half of it. I like your grapes. Thanks. Dating is often like watching a show on Netflix. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's like watching a series. Yeah. And you, you go through it, and you've got like five years left to go, so you're all excited. But as you go along, you get sad, because... It's almost over? It's almost over. <clears throat> Have you ever painted miniatures? Do you think you might paint some of Weird's minis? Tab asks you. Um... I might paint them for myself. What if somebody said, can you paint them for me? I doubt it. Those small little suckers. I think it falls under the same category if I don't paint motorcycles either. Got it. So is there anybody here from uh, Weird that 
picked a character for me to do. They had a really cool campaign to see who their fans wanted. You know, uh, redesigned. It was cool because every single time somebody came up, I had to go and research who the hell they were. You know, you get excited thinking, oh, I'm going to get to paint this one. There's one guy, can't remember his name. But he's got this really cool mask. And they've never taken the mask off. So they have no idea what he looks like under the mask. So. As soon as they were telling me that, I found myself going, I know what he is. I know what he looks like. See, Tab says, first time I got really sad like that was when I finished the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe books. Uh, Fatal wants to know how many paintings in total do you have to do? Um, for this project, this one is, uh, I believe, 13. But they've already asked me to paint 50, you know, to do 15 more today. Uh, let's see, Airbrush Mike says, Sammy, is there a way to see all the different prints you guys have for sale? On your guys' homepage, it only shows so many, but I know you have more. We are in the process of updating uh, our website. So we kind of have bare bones on the on the website, which is TommyCustillo.net. You can also go to the Facebook. We do post new prints up there. And pretty much anything you see visually, visual-wise um, on the uh, fan page, which is Tommy Castillo Studios, uh, you can order as a print. And if you do a Google search on my name, on an image search, and you find something, save it, send it to Sam, and she'll tell you whether or not a print's available for it. Because there are tons of things online uh, that I may not have advertised anymore but it doesn't mean we can't get them or don't have them yeah sometimes we'll get special orders Tommy does a commission like uh which one was it oh it was uh Raphael and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle obviously and Wolverine fighting the foot I think it was it was a commission for somebody and we got a lot of special orders on that one. But in the next week or so, we should have our new website up and running. We had some payment interfacing problems. To my dead zone. Have you ever ran into the issue of somebody trying to pass your work off as their own? No. Nobody has the guts to try that. Uh, the, old, the closest that we've gotten was um, uh, somebody uh, like a dealer mislabeled artwork that wasn't Tommy's because he didn't really know what he had and wasn't familiar with comic books and stuff. So they labeled, you know, they labeled the comic book and the art incorrectly as Tommy's, but then corrected it. Well, also, there was a guy one time 
trying to sell originals that were not mine and were fakes. Saying it was yours? Saying it was mine. Oh, well, the... And then he told me that he was first close to no friends with Tommy Castillo. Yeah, and he didn't even know who you were? And I knocked his entire booth down. Well, we did have... And Tommy's not allowed to talk about it because he signed a, a, a gag order. But um, the... If you guys remember, I don't know if it's still on, um, Ink Masters, um... That's right, I forgot from about Sp that. Bastard. On Spike TV, uh, the very first season, their first season winner, and I have no problem saying it, Shane O'Neill, because again, Tommy's not saying it, he actually, um, tried to claim Tommy's Leviathan. It's a big black and white piece that Tommy's, mo one of Tommy's most well-known pieces uh, he tattooed it on a guy's back and then tried to claim it as his own. Yeah. So, um, we sued the shit out of him. Yep. And, you know, Tommy signed an order saying he wouldn't, you know, he wasn't allowed to say anything or anything, or, you know, wouldn't do an interview. Um, and they spun, the funny thing is, is our fans went rabid on him, but, um, uh, that got us a new motorcycle for Tommy. Yeah, my favorite part, and I actually wrote it, but my favorite part was uh, we were going back and forth with the lawyers, and he wrote, um, his lawyer forwarded it to us, and he said, well, to make up for the, um, to make up for the um, loss of pay or whatever, he would, the guy would offer to do a free tattoo on Tommy, and Tommy wrote something kind of nice. And I, I went back and I rewrote it, and I, I was really brutal. I said, um, I said, you know, who the F are you to offer me a tattoo when you have to steal my artwork to be great and well known? Um, you aren't even, uh, you aren't even good enough to wash my studio brushes, <laughs> or something like that. It was very funny. But yeah, um, and I don't think they air that season anymore because of it. I don't know, though. Well, we sued him, and then he got sued Yeah, he by got sued by Spike show. because he signed a... Uh, he signed a bunch of stuff saying that all the artwork he showed and displayed was his, created by him. And uh, they, you know, they at first said, well, there was no name on the piece of art. You know, there was no name on it, so blah, blah, blah. And where Tommy's name was is actually, like, negative, like, he took out the picture to put his name in. So, you would have had to cre create stuff to cover Tommy's name. Um, and then they said, you know, they that the guy brought it in and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of hem and haw, but long of the short of it, a couple letters later, we got a motorcycle. Yeah. When it comes to Tommy, I am uh, brutally and uh, what would be the word to use? Uh, un brutally and I can't think of the word I want to use. But anyway, I'm pretty brutal when it comes to protecting Tommy. Relentless. I am very relentless and unforgiving. <laughs> I totally forgot about that scumbag. Yep. Well, he's forgettable. Yep. Again, he had to copy you to be great. Unendingly, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's not Tommy you have to, uh... It's not Tommy you have to watch out for anymore. It's me. Fatal says... Or Venus says, uh, burn Sammy high fives. Uh, Dylan says, unendingly. Venus says, from Sammy to demon protector in 0 0.5 seconds. <laughs> I think it takes less than that. You know, the tattoo was actually, uh, because he did it on the guy's back. Um, and it was actually quite well done. You know, if... Well, the bad part, the funny part about it is, if the guy had just asked me if he could tattoo it, I would have said yes. Every artist out there that tattoos my work, I get an email, you know, very polite, 
you know, very respectful, you know, can I tattoo this? And I've never said no. It's when they steal and are disrespectful that it caused me to take action. action. Yeah, we have a you have a ton of fans that buy the art and then get it tattooed. Get it tattooed. And the the thing of it is is that the the person that's purchasing the art to get copy, you know, to get tattooed asks if it's okay. And of course he says yes. But um but then the tattoo artist 99% of the time will contact us through one of our social medias or email and say, "Hey, somebody brought this in. Is it cool that I, you know, it would be a great honor if you'd give me permission to tattoo this on this person. And again, we always say yes. And the tattoo was actually quite well done. Right? Yeah. I, I wish you did tattoos. That would be a dream come true. An original Tommy Castillo tattooed by Tommy himself. <laughs> the funny thing is I know many tattoo artists and I just did a... They just did an article on me in the tattoo magazine. You have to find out which one it is. He's an art director for a couple. Yeah, so I just did a, a tattoo magazine article. And, um. Well, I mean, you could. I, I know so many guys, and they're willing, you know, major, major tattoo artists. Yeah. And they just say they want to teach me how to use the gun, and then they tell me, whatever you want to do, just go for it. Yeah. I mean, you could technically get a Tommy Castillo tattoo, but I don't know how good it would be. <laughs> I do all my tattoos with a knife. <laughs> Emily says, man, I need a Tommy tattoo. I um, have two of them. You guys would be shocked. You're all going to be walking around with rubber ducks. <laughs> Drawn with his left hand and his eyes closed. Although we know what Tommy's blind drawings look like so it's actually really good x3 says I'll take it lol <laughs> Emily goes, I mean, yeah, I'm not seeing a risk here, guys, with a little tongue sticking out emo. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. It would hurt and there would be happy accidents, Justin says. <laughs> you know, the weird part is I'd be trying to throw the, the gun. You'd be trying to throw the gun? Yeah, throw the machine at, at them, the... Like I throw paint. Oh, yeah. But add in the needle. I think I'll stick to Tommy Art on my wall. Uh, Fina says. I think it's a good plan. It's the damnedest thing. I can't find the Leviathan tattoo anywhere. Well, of course not. <laughs> Well, it was taken, you know, he wasn't allowed to use it for advertising or anything. So it was taken off pretty much all social media. And I'm sure Spike squashed it too. But if you look up, you know, Leviath Tommy Castillo Leviathan, you'll see which dragon it is. Let me see if I can find it, actually, now that I'm talking about it. the longest I painted with no music. Well, you're kind of talking. I only talk because I like the sound of my voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 
I've seen Tommy's. I just wanted to see the tattoo of it. Yeah, I don't, I, I doubt it's up anywhere. Justin says, going home, see you guys tomorrow. Drive safe, Justin, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, time. Justin. I just linked in the Google search. Oh, wrong Google search. No, wait, I did the right one. Catania Castillo La Barba, there you go. Ta-da! Unless it searched both of them, but you should be able to see Tommy's Dragon. Funny thing is, when I did that, I was rooming with another artist from high school. And when I told him what I was going to do, he said I was nuts. We have Leviathan, don't we? Yeah, we own the original. You should show it to him. Uh, let's see. Stephen Lynn says, how did you find out he, ta he tattooed it to the guy? It was all over the TV. And I got emails every day from hundreds of people telling me, Asking. Asking about it. Asking why I'm not credited for it. Yeah. And uh, my fans went after him. Yep. I honestly wasn't even going to do anything about it until I... Uh, well, until it was the episode that he claimed it was his, that he drew he drew the whole thing. Yep. Once the pathetic excuse for an artist... You know, once the bottom feeder said that uh, he did it. He created it. Then I went after him. And he's actually lucky that I went after him legally. Had I been in my youth, it would have been, been a baseball bat and I would have been in jail. Yeah. I got his sketch. The zombie Nazi sketch. I found it for you. Okay. Just saying. No, I was looking for Leviathan so we could show them the original. It's in there. I know. I was. That's what I was looking at for. I just don't know where it is. It's in one of the drawers. There it is. Now, when you look at Leviathan, a lot of people think it's a really big drawing. Actually, it's quite small. Do you want to leave it in the plastic? Yes. Here you go. So here's Leviathan. Here's the original. You see that? Uh, you can lower it a little bit. How's that? Perfect. And uh, if you want to see, there was a special magical pencils that I use. Where's one? Oh. Yeah. You mean one of these? Yeah. When this was done, you know, I was told that in order to render in pencil, you have to use 2B, 6B, 9B, you know, and that you have to go out and get mechanical pencils and it has to be done this way. So on purpose, I drew every one of the book's pencil illustrations with a yellow number two, Taiga and Daroga. You know, to make it all. And I just wanted to show off. What size is that? 11 by 17. That's 11 by 17? Mm hmm. Yep. I was looking to see if I, where the date was. The date's on, I think, 1999. It's right by this side. There it is. 1999 or 2000. Yeah. MVP says, that's incredible. Here you go. And one of the fans, uh, it says 2000. One of the fans um, uh, counted the bodies, and there's like like three hundred and over 350 different individual bodies on this. Yeah, 
Yeah, like I was saying, when I did it... The shading is so smooth. When I did it, the artist that I lived with told me I was nuts and I shouldn't put that much work into a project like that. And I told them, brother, one day this might be a piece that I am known for. This can make all the difference in the world. But they didn't believe that. They believed that you should put the minimal amount of work in. You know, put in as little as possible to get out as much as possible. And I always said that means that you're going to be no, nothing and nobody. Wasn't that the same artist that told you that you should um, uh, paint exactly for the amount that you were commissioned for? Yes. That you never pay a dollar over what you were paid. Hindu Art says, and the anatomy looks fantastic. Stephen says, Tommy is the person in the background, a drawer too. Yeah. Got to be proud of what you do. And that doesn't come easy. Surprised you didn't hide Uzi or Oliver in there. Normally you do. I did, but it stood out so much that I didn't want it to just Fair enough. stand out. Like Kermit? Kermit was easy to hide. I'm going through the first season of Ink Masters to try and find it. Well, the Leviathan was on the like his intro, because they did like the person standing with their arms crossed and then a piece of their art in the background. So every time the show aired, it showed Tommy's Leviathan. And then they did like a black and white special. And it was like one of the featured pieces or something. I didn't even try and watch it. I just saw that it was in the beginning. I didn't watch the episode. I was too pissed off. Yeah. The screwy part is the judges. I know. Yes, you know all of them. I know all of them. So, And they know me for that piece. So those bastards knew what they were looking at. You never know. They could have called the guy on it, and then they just edited it out. Could have. I mean, look what happened with me on that stupid uh, Heroes of Cosplay. Oh, yeah. They made you look like an idiot. They didn't make me look like an idiot. Well, they, 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 they made... Out. Huh? They took everything out that I said. They made all, in, well, in the whole show, they made the judges look like idiots. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, Steven asks, what kind of motorbike does Tommy drive? I have a Harley. I have a Harley Low. Dynalo. 06. But it's completely customized. I've, you know, painted the whole thing and... It has three-dimensional sculptures all over it. Customized metalwork by Mrs. Castillo. Yes, we both did the metalwork on the bike. She welded it. I shaped and constructed it. And together, we put together awesome stuff. That's right. Is the bike online? Can they see the bike anywhere? I believe it's on Facebook. I think it's on Tommy's personal Facebook page. So if you go to mine or the fan page, you can get to uh, Tommy's personal page, which really isn't a personal page. It's just another page. I actually don't even go on it. I never thought I'd be one of those guys, but apparently I am. What, that doesn't go on social media? No, just one of those people that, you know, they're like, they're famous, and it looks like you could get in contact with them, but they don't actually go on it themselves. No, you have a wife for that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You used to. It's just that when you got sick, you stopped. Well, I also just 
don't really care for it. You know, I hate that it's. You know, I, I, I just don't like what it promotes. I only go on to answer people's questions. Yeah, well, that's what it's meant for. But I think every single time I go on, somebody else claims to be related to me. Yeah. Don't you have like 57? I have 37 nephews. 37. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Fina says, we get to talk to Sammy, so it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I handle all of that. Anyway, I, I don't an you know, I don't go on there because I can't answer anything. I don't know. <laughs> you know, ask me an R question. No problem. I can answer them all day. But ask me where we're going to be in December. Got me. Jekyll Island. Comic Con. To answer your question. I think that's our one and only show. What, in December? Or for the no, rest of the year? year? Uh, yeah, we're doing... We're doing a little Halloween thing over, if you're Florida-based, in uh, Port Ritchie at Yancey Street Comics. We're doing a, um... Uh, on Sunday the 30th, we're gonna be there for a little signing and a... They're doing a kids' event for Halloween, so we'll be there for that. And we may go back on Monday because they do the kids' trip mall trick or treat. And Tommy likes seeing the seeing the kids' costumes. Can you put the link in the chat so I can see the bike? Yes, Dylan, who was on a mission to see what this Leviathan tattoo looked like. Uh, he is missing all of the lighter and sharp details in it. There's not nearly as many values as the drawing, and he couldn't get as sharp of corners because of the tattoo gun. So there you go. I just realized I'm sitting here painting with my tongue sticking out. Yeah, you do that a lot. Not that that's a bad thing, I'm just saying you do that. Alright, I'm looking up the bike right now, just waiting for things to load. One of the bad parts about getting my sight back is not actually bad, but it's just since I've got my sight back, I've had a really hard time sleeping. You know, I just don't want to go to sleep. And I actually stayed up for several days. You know, basically until I blacked out. Yeah, that was like 5 or 6 in the morning, I think. Studio. Here it is. Uh, oh, this is when we were on tour. My motorcycle. Now, I had... A Honda Shadow, but I sold it to my friend George, and he's uh, redone it in his own way. You know, brought it back to life. Uh, 
Okay, so Tommy equals awesome. Art Stealer equals poop. Tommy, I'm expletive that's blanked out. I'm going to say shit at drawing. How do I get better? Practice. All it takes is practice. No excuses. You know, just keep trying. Don't ever give up. You know, it takes a very long journey to get there. But you can do it. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Let's see here. Airbrush Mike says, the tongue sticking out could mean you're the Michael Jordan of our time. I have to finish watching the rest tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Good night. Well, I think I'm going to call it quits. Okay. I'm getting tired now. Sounds good. Do we have any, uh, for wrap-up, do we have any last-minute questions, yeah. comments, concerns, suggestions? Come on, Oliver. Want to see Oliver? Come on. Come on. I believe in you, Oliver. You can move. Anything more? Uh, not at the moment. You got to give it a little bit because there's a delay. Well, thank you again for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Good job. And if art is your passion or dream, you know, what one man could do, another could do. Emily says, Love you guys. Love you, Emily. Steven says, Well, nice bike. Venus says, Good night. Good night, Fina. Sleep well. Inga wants a puppy cameo. Jesse says, thanks, Tommy and Sammy. Nighters. Night. I like how you're like, I'm tired. I'm going to stop now. And you keep painting. Oh, I'll paint up until we turn it off. Feel like you're making up for lost time? You mean with the year? Yeah, the year and a half. Thanks for sharing your process and insights, Tab says. Well, you're welcome. I'll do my closing spiel, and then you can do your, your words of wisdom. Um, for those of you just joining us tonight and new to the channel, you can uh, get all of our, follow all of our social media. It's underneath uh, in the channel below the video. Um, I announce a couple hours, usually 1 to o'clock every day, uh, whether or not we're going to be streaming again because of Tommy's health and what time. Usually it's going to be 7 o'clock, uh, east, 7 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you follow, share, like, fo tweet, whatever. Um, and, uh, you get to see the rest of the process. Right? Yep. Any final words of wisdom? Uh, I said it before, but, you know, I've painted a mountain of bad paintings just to get to one good one. So, if I can do it, you can do it. Have faith, have conviction, follow your dream. Good luck. Good night, everyone. Say good night, Tommy. Good night, Tommy. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow.